Welcome back to another episode of Virtual DJ Tips. In the last video, we focused on DVS or timecode signal with a standard audio interface. We actually use the SL2 box. So if you've missed that video, I'll put a link right here so that you can click on it and check that one out. Today, we're going to look at a DVS setup with a controller. Now there are many controllers on the market that allow you to do this. I'm going to show you the two that I have readily available. So the first controller that we have here that's capable of doing timecode signal is the Denon DJ MC6000 MK2. A couple things you're going to want to know about this unit is that all switches on the top should be set to the PC mode. So you just want to make sure of that. If we flip the device around, you have a USB setting on the back. You want it set to line 3 and 4 through to PC. So the switch all the way to the left or if it's turned around all the way to the right. And then you've got two switches here for line 3 and line 4 which would input your timecode signal. You want them both set to phono and not line. So in this case we are going to use line 4 as a timecode input. We're just going to use one deck and we're going to plug right into here. So what we need to do is the same thing that we did with our Serato box. Hook up our ground. If you have two you'll need to hook them both up. Make sure that's snug. Plug in your RCA leads. Turn the device around. Plug in our power and our USB. Take your other end, plug it into the computer, and then we want to power on our device as well as the turntable. Okay, now that we have everything connected, it's time to open up Virtual DJ, go to our settings and you'll see the icon for the Denon DN MC6000 MK2. So we're going to click on it. It's going to go to its default sound configuration, which is master plus headphones. Now, we've added timecode to this, so we're going to go and click on timecode signal. It'll give us two boxes, timecode 1 and timecode 2. For this case, we're just going to use timecode 2 because we're using the right deck only. So it automatically configures it for you. Click apply. And then we go to our timecode signal. Click the little timecode tab. Serato side B is automatically configured. We can go to calibrate. Timecode successfully calibrated. So now with the timecode running, we can throw a song into the deck. Drop our needle and the song begins to play. And we have full control over the vinyl. And if we had a master output plugged in, you would hear it out the speakers. Alright, so our second device is the Hercules DJ Console RMX2. It is capable of doing timecode as well. If we look at the back of the device, it has a power, an on-off switch, a USB port, it's got outputs to RCAs, it's got booth outs, it has XLRs, and then it also has the two inputs that you can switch to line or phono. So once again, we're switching to phono. Since the turntable is on the right side, 
we are going to use inputs three and four. Same thing. Take our cable, hook up our connections, three and four, color coded, unzip our ground, and plug that in as well. Plug in our USB and power, and flip the device around. Okay, so now that the RMX2 is connected, we need to open up our software again, go into configuration, and you will see that the Hercules console RMX2 is there, and it's the same as the 6000, master and headphones. So we need to add that time code signal. Once again, we click on the time code signal. It'll give us two, time code one and time code two. Now, since we don't have anything connected for time code one, we'll just get rid of it. Click apply, and then go back to that time code tab, just like the MC6000. Press play on our turntable. And as you can see, the time code signal is automatically configured. Signal strength is good at 100%. It also shows you the position and the speed. Now, if you, your signal was weak, you could choose to calibrate it. And then it will advise you that time code was successfully calibrated. So if we just grab anything, throw it into the deck. Press play. You can see that our time code signal is playing the track for us. And if we put our hand on it, we have very good tracking and very good manipulation of the actual track itself. So the MC6000 and the RMX2 are not the only controllers that you can do this with. You may already have one. Best thing to do is check the manufacturer's website and see if it's capable of inputting a DVS or time code signal back to the software. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, give it a thumbs up, and share it with your friends. Until next time, keep your head in the mix.